Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm going to be talking about transitioning into a new career role. I know a lot of you guys out there are trying to transition from either finance to marketing, marketing to finance, or even more difficult, you're trying to go from the banking sector to the IT sector. Uh, and those transitions can be very, very hard. Me personally, I've been through many, many different transitions in my life, and I wanted to share some of those and the experiences that I've had and some tips and tricks on how to make those transitions smoother and easier. So stick around. Transitioning your career is not easy. It's actually quite hard. Sometimes you have to take a step back or even two steps back if you want to change industry or if you want to change your entire career trajectory. It's never too late, as they say, but it's not easy. I'm going to give you my story today. So when I was really, really small, all of my friends wanted to be firemen and policemen and astronauts, right? The, the classic sort of childlike fantasy. Uh, but even from a very small age, five, six years old, when they asked me, what do you want to be when you grow up? I would say the CEO of Coca-Cola. Now, why Coca-Cola? Because I was small and my parents didn't let, let me have Coke. And I knew that if I was the CEO, I can drink as much Coke as I want. But the key there wasn't the Coca-Cola. The key there is that I knew I wanted to be a manager in a management role. I wanted to have my own business, uh, own my own stock, and be in the business sector. So from a very young age, I had that ideation in my mind. Uh, when I started growing up and I got into you know, college, uh, I thought the easiest route to get to that high level of business is through investment banking. So I started thinking I want to be a finance major and move into investment banking. If I move into investment banking, then my life will become easier and I can get to that CEO level, you know, Fortune 500 companies, etc., um, and I found that route to be the easiest one. So I did my master's in finance. Uh, I got a degree and I started working at a bank. Uh, it wasn't an investment bank right off the bat. I started working at a commercial bank, uh, but I did work in the dealing department. So that was sort of my first step into any type of career. Uh, I started working in the dealing department. Uh, banks are heavy. They're bureaucratic. Uh, they're extremely tight. It's very difficult to get, you know, any type of traction in your career. They're very, very long sort of waiting periods for promotions. Uh, they're very top heavy. So it's sort of like, you know, there's a hundred people waiting for one management position. And then there's a hundred managers waiting for a VP position and so on and so forth. Um, so I, I figured out very quickly that maybe that's not the best route. Um, but I didn't really didn't know how to get there. I didn't really know what to do next. I got a really cool offer. Um, from a uh, quite a large uh, uh, nonprofit organization. And you know, I'm in my 20s, so I thought, you know, fuck it, why not? Let's jump in um, and see what's what the nonprofit sector is about. Get some more experience, you know, learn. They say 20s is for learning, uh, 30s is for making your move, 40s is for getting rich, and 50s is to, to simply enjoy the pleasures of life. And since I was in my 20s, I thought, you know, new experience, understanding a new sector. So I jumped in. Um, moving from banking to nonprofit was a, a huge, huge transition. I mean, the first thing I quickly realized is that the speed is extremely, extremely slow. So you got to get used to things moving much slower than expected. Now, it's understandable because the money that we were spending were donations. So there's a lot more oversight on how money is spent versus a private company or a bank where there's much less oversight because it's already budgeted and that budget doesn't have as, as much oversight as you would for a nonprofit organization. So even moving a pen from A to B, just buying 10 pens took weeks instead of days uh, because there was so much oversight. Um, so I, I, I understood that that transition was hard. I had to slow down. But once I did slow down, once I started understanding what we're trying to accomplish at the nonprofit, um, I just really started enjoying it. Because the cool part about a nonprofit that exists that's no in none of the other sectors in the world is you always have an end user. 
you have somebody at the end, a beneficiary, that's actually getting the charity or getting a school that the community needs or uh, getting books uh, from a library or getting, so they're getting a result, an impact, and you can actually change a lot of people's lives. And you're standing at the forefront. So you get to see directly how you're changing people's lives for the better. And these people are always appreciative of that. And, uh, and you create these bonds that you know last for, for a lifetime. Uh, you really don't get that in any other sector. Uh, now, understandably, I was working in the fundraising sector, so fundraising part of the NGO. So it was a little bit more like the private sector. Um, it was a lot of talking, negotiating. Um, but still, when you go to you know, the villages, you go to the places where you actually made a difference, then you really get, you really get what people are talking about. Uh, then I moved from there uh, into uh, consulting. Now, what I did through consulting is I decided I'm going to do an MBA. So MBA was always in the program. I always wanted to do an MBA. So I flew to um, Budapest, Hungary. Uh, now it's based in uh, Vienna, Austria, CEU Business School. And I got my MBA. Uh, wh while I was doing my MBA, uh, I met Paul Garrison. Paul Garrison was my first mentor, and he's a marketing guy. Um, so I started getting more and more into marketing. And I quickly realized that the part of the investment banking and the banking sector, the finance that I really loved was the data and the data analytics. So running numbers, uh, running, you know, creating your own algorithms, uh, figuring out insights through the numbers. All of that was the part I was really, really enjoying from the finance sector. And I was able to take my love of numbers and combine that with my love of um, psychology, if you will. And that kind of created this marketing area. And I really started digging deep into marketing. Uh, even today, when they ask me, I'm a marketing guy through and through. Marketing flows through flows through my veins. Uh, now, this was back in 2008. Uh, it, the 2008 marketing scene was very, very different from what it is today. Uh, but even in 2008, I knew that I wanted to be a data-driven marketeer. And that kind of paid out in the long run because if you're not data-driven today, you cannot be a marketeer simply. Um, so from that perspective, my financial background really helped. So I got my left hand, my finance. I got my right hand, my MBA in marketing. And I jumped into consulting. I did business consulting, business development consulting specifically, and more narrow, focused on marketing and marketing strategies. Most of my clients were Fortune 500 companies, um, and I worked in about 30 different countries. So the cool thing about transitioning from the NGO sector to consulting is, well, number one, the money. It's much, 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 much more money. Uh, incomparable the amount of money you can make in consulting versus the nonprofit sector. Uh, so that jump definitely made a huge impact on my career. Uh, the second key thing is that you get to work on different projects. So it's different industries. I worked for, I had clients in the pharma sector, in the banking sector, in the Horeca sector, uh, beer, uh, alcohol, whatever, whatever you can imagine. I probably had a client in that industry. And again, you get to work across, you know, different countries. So you get to jump around. And what that allows is a huge amount of growth in terms of knowledge. I doubt there's an industry that you, you can mention that I don't have some sort of knowledge about or even deep knowledge about uh, because I've worked in that industry for a certain period of time. Moving into consulting, the, the, the easiest way was you have to have the right team. So consulting, it's all about the people. It's not about the product. It's not about the, the methodologies or the algorithms. A lot of it is about the people. If you're in a group, if you join a team and your senior consultant on the case, so your partner or your senior consultant uh, wants to take you under their wing, they want to mentor you, uh, they want you to grow and you want to learn from them, you're going to have a great time. Uh, if that's not the case, you're going to have problems. So don't go for any consulting company and don't go for the consulting company with a name, McKinsey, BCG. It doesn't matter what, what the company is. What matters is what team you're ultimately are going to end up in because that consulting pod is going to be your family for the next four or five years. Um, it takes a long time to get to that senior consultant or partner area. Uh, and through that process, you want a, a nurturing environment. It's okay to make mistakes. Uh, as long as you learn from them and not all partners are that forgiving. So pick the partner, don't pick the firm. The negative part about working in a consulting firm is that it's a jungle out there. It's dog eat dog. Uh, there's, there's almost no loyalties involved. 
Um, you know, you, you are a team, there's partners, but there's a bunch of corporate politics that's always being played. Uh, you're as good as your portfolio, basically. So as long as you're bringing in cash into the business and into the partnership, and the partners are getting dividends from the money that you're bringing in, you're good. If you're not hunting and you're not bringing in any food to the tribe, you're going to have problems. So it's a very doggy dog situation. Uh, clients are being poached. Uh, there's always arguments about who brought in the client. Uh, so you help somebody bring it in. Um, you're trying to become a senior consultant. So the partner needs to pass you down some clients ultimately so you can grow. So there's this sort of uh, corporate culture around consulting that a lot of the horror stories that you guys heard are probably true. Um, now, if you're extremely determined and motivated, you can make a shit ton of money and that is where the motivation lies. But when it comes to things like friendships or uh, growing your your uh, your human side, uh, then you're probably in the wrong business. Everybody's a shark and you better deal with it. I was in the consulting business for more than 12 years. I actually made partners, so from that perspective, I'm happy I got to the top level and I went through all of the different processes. Uh, and I can tell you right now that if you don't make partner, it's pointless. If you do make partner, great. Uh, but again, it's dog eat dog, so it's it's a constant struggle and a constant fight. So uh, go in with your eyes open if you're going into consulting. Then I transitioned from consulting into the public sector. I know it sounds really weird. Uh, why the hell would you go from being a partner to you know the public sector? A lot of consulting actually partners do. Um, it's not it's not a lot of difference. What my motivation was very clear. I was still not at this age. I was in my 30s, early 30s, and my my drive was that I really wanted to give something back to the community. I kind of still had this aftertaste of working with the NGO. So I knew how how much good I could do and how much my knowledge in marketing, communications, uh, sales skills, consulting, business overall can really help impact the community. And my thinking there was that instead of doing it through an NGO and uh, and impacting only you know, one village by one village or one cluster by one cluster, one beneficiary by one beneficiary, I can do it at a larger scale if I go into the public sector. So my thinking was I do probably three, four years, uh, I want to be in the public sector, help as much as I can, and then get out and come back into the private sector. Um, so I did. I jumped in. The public sector is a completely different animal. Uh, if you are in the public sector, if you are a public servant, uh, then I applaud you. It's one of the toughest jobs in the world. Uh, I've been there. I've done that. It, it is one of the toughest jobs in the world. So when I jumped into the public sector, I wanted a non-political position because I really wanted to change some things, right? Do something, have an impact. Um, so there was a unit that I, I, I managed. Uh, I had 50 people under my command and uh, we were doing a lot of good, a lot of foreign direct investment uh, relations, uh, a lot of foreign direct investment policy, uh, a lot of foreign direct investment marketing and communication. So it's a lot of like building relations to different companies that are willing to invest in, in that specific region where you operate. Um, so we were able to bring in about $80 million in a year and a half. So it's not that bad. I'm not super happy with the outcome, uh, but the team was really awesome. So we were able to build. The problem with the, pro the public sector is, although that you think you're in a non-political position, there's always politics involved and politics slow down everything and almost grind it to a halt. So if you're going into the public sector or you're a public servant, and you really want to do something good, you're really in it for the motivation of doing something good for your community, and you're not in it just for the power play, then you're going to have a problem. Because those types of people, those technocratic uh, people, especially if you're coming from the private sector, um, you're a threat. Uh, and so was I. So there's always politics revolving around it. So about two and a half years into the four years that I wanted to be in the public sector, I realized that you know, 70% of my time is spent on just managing egos and politicians, and only 30% of my time is actually managing the team so that we can get impact. And as soon as I realized that, uh, I quit, I left, and I went back into the private sector. Now, this is where things get interesting. I left the public sector, so I went through all of that, that transition, and I'm coming out. My old consulting firm called and said, do you guys, do you want to come back? So I could have gone, you know, gone back into consulting as a partner. 
Um, but you know, I didn't really want to do that. Uh, I didn't want to travel much. It's a, it's a heavy burden on travel. So you travel almost nonstop. Uh, my record was 270 travel days out of 365. So it's a little bit messy. I really wanted to create a home base. I already had a wife and a kid and a second one on the way at the time. So I really wanted to make sure I'm creating a nest, a home, and I didn't want to travel as much. So uh, I started looking around and I opened up my own consulting firm uh, just, you know, just to get things rolling so that I can have some you know, income generation. And I met a whole bunch of people. Now, obviously, because I was in the public sector, my network was through the roof. That's one of the positive sides of the public sector. You get to know everyone, all of the players, all of the players get to know you. Um, so I talked to one of my, uh, my old colleagues and uh, he said, you know, I'm starting this startup. Uh, do you want to jump in? Why don't we do this together? Come on the advisory board and then we can figure out a role for you down the line. Um, and I thought, you know, that's where the world is going. It's IT and tech. Might as well, you know, jump in now while I'm young. And if things go bad, then, you know, I can always go back into consulting or back into some other job. Um, not much to lose, not much to risk. So why not? We've got some capital. So let's do it. So I jumped into the startup. Um, I think that was one of the hardest transitions I've ever had to do. Moving from what I knew about the business world uh, into a startup, all of the tools, all of the techniques, all of the management um, skills that I had, all of a sudden are irrelevant. Startups are managed in a very, very different way. All the marketing stuff I knew is still relevant. So all my marketing knowledge I can still implement, I can still use. Obviously, there's some tweaks, the tools are different, more digital, more online, uh, but still there's a lot of things that I can do. But when it comes to the management specifically, managing structures, managing people, managing financial resources, it's extremely different. Startups don't think about budgets they don't think about things like operating margin they don't think about things like you know sales revenue growth and what is the what is the stock price versus so all of these stuff are just irrelevant uh, what's really relevant becomes how much money are you bringing per month how much money are you spending per month how much of a runway do you have and when is the next investment round that you need so these types of questions really had to tweak all of my management focus to be completely honest, I'm seven months in and I'm still learning a lot. There's still a lot I need to learn. A lot of things that I'm still picking up. For example, uh, I haven't actually sat down and done copywriting myself for years, for 15 years. I've always had somebody to, a copywriter or somebody to do it for me. But it's a startup. Uh, my English is pretty cool. Uh, I'm, I'm good at copywriting. Obviously, I'm good at writing scripts. As you guys can see, I hope, I hope you guys can see. Um, so I started doing a lot of copywriting in the startup. So it's just a different type of situation. And transitioning there is very complicated. Now, for a lot of people out there that haven't worked in the IT sector, haven't worked in the tech sector, and they want to jump in, it's going to be hard. These guys, these startup guys, they don't, they don't accept you as their own. This is the simple reality, especially for me because I'm coming from non-IT consulting, which is kind of the worst you can, and marketing. So it's just red flags all around. When I talk to any of our engineers here, it's almost like I'm a second class citizen. It's like, you know, you guys are, I don't know what, what you're doing in marketing, but go like, go play with your PowerPoints or whatever the fuck you do over there. You know, that's sort of the, the emotion that, that I get. And that's true of the entire industry. So it's very hard to crack and get in. Once you're in, then you're in, then you're in forever. They accept you, you are their person, and you can jump from a startup to startup or one IT company to another IT company extremely easy. And your, your salary starts snowballing because of that. But cracking in really takes a lot of time. They're the type of people, it's the profile of the person. I'm a marketeer, so I always bring it down, back down to target groups and profiles, right? So it's the profile of the person, the profile of an, a startup, the profile of the people uh, who work in a startup, their driving force is usually the developers, the engineers, the people who are working on the product. So, and they are usually the founders or they have a founding member. So you have a lot of this sort of technical knowledge based people. Now they suck at marketing and they know it, um, but they also feel like they don't know marketing. So it's kind of a foofy non-science. It's some magical thing that you do that brings in money. So ultimately it's very difficult to get in. My recommendation is take as many training courses as you can. Just pack your CV with courses 
internships, anything that can ping that you are orbiting at least the ecosystem of the tech industry and then somebody will pull you in from that orbit but if you don't orbit that ecosystem at all and you're just kind of jumping in blind it's very very unlikely anybody will ever accept you you have to know the terminologies you have to know the buzzwords you have to know the right you know points to hit uh, and if you know those, then you can jump in. If you don't, it's going to get complicated. So try to orbit around the ecosystem and then try to find somebody that might be able to pull you in. And then from there, you can snowball and go forth. Thank you very much, guys, for watching. This was my story and how I transitioned from, from different uh, industries. If you, have, if you guys have some really cool stories on how you transitioned, how it went, please, please let me know in the comment section below. And as always, thank you for staying by. Subscribe, and I'll see you next week.